Hey guys and girls, would you like to learn how to build a custom wine rack for your IKEA section cabinets like this one here? Maybe you've looked on the IKEA website and you've seen some options, but they're maybe a little too plain, too traditional, or too modern. And all of those options only come in certain sizes and might not work with the layout in your kitchen, well, this is the place to be. We're gonna show you how to build this with very minimal knowledge, minimal amount of tools, and if they put in a little bit of sweat equity, you're gonna be able to do this quick, easy, and with professional results. So stick around, we're gonna show you how to do this. So the first step is fairly easy. All we're gonna do is we're going to remove, there's about four screws that are holding that cabinet in place. We have not nailed the uh, bottom or upper cabinet uh, deco strip in. So we'll be able to remove this cabinet and get this wine rack on the go. So Atticus has decided that he's gonna help us out. But basically what we're gonna do is, one oversight that I made is I actually caulked that deco strip on the bottom. So I gotta cut the back side of that caulking. And then because the deco strip is installed up at the top, we're gonna need to take those brackets out of the back of the cabinet so that we can slide everything out. So just a couple of extra steps in my case to get this cabinet out, but we'll show you how that goes. So as you can see, we've removed these brackets from the back, one, two sides. Right now there's two screws, one on each side here that's holding this cabinet in place. We took a knife, just a simple utility knife. We ran it down through here, cut the caulking, made sure that everything's loose. Once we loosen off those two screws, this cabinet will literally, literally slide right out of there. Even though we've got that deco strip up the top that's kind of locking everything in, and then obviously the one on the bottom that's locking it in, this will literally slide this way right out. We'll have free free reign, free use, and, and uh, ready to rock and roll. And that's the cabinet removed. So now we're ready to take it downstairs and move on to the next steps. Stay tuned. All right, guys and girls, so we've got the cabinet frame down here in the basement in my shop just easier for me to work on this is actually set up right now on my table saw because it's a nice big flat surface i've laid down an old towel and it's not really to protect it as much as it is to keep it from sliding around um, the back side of this cabinet is never going to be seen so if it was to get scratched it's not the end of the world but again it just kind of keeps it from sliding around as much so this is gonna be kind of uh, up to you guys and girls how far you wanna take this. So this cabinet here, I'm actually gonna be painting black. I don't want it to be white. You saw in the corner that we've actually got um, that black cabinet door with the glass inserts in it. And we wanna carry that theme over to this here. So that means for me, at least for what I wanna do, is I wanna fill in these holes. Now, if you wanna leave everything white, Ikea actually sells uh, plugs that you can buy in packs of 100 for around $4. So if you're going white, it's already done for you. You could take those patches, or those plugs, sorry, and you can patch those holes. The other thing I was toying with was maybe buying uh, wooden dowel so for those that don't know a dowel is almost like like a pencil and I would cut it into small pieces and Actually glue those pieces into the holes Problem with that is that if everything's not perfect, then you're still gonna have to follow that with a spackle So I'm gonna just cut right to the chase and we're gonna put spackle in there is something like this which is a white patch and it works very very well the problem is with this kind of patch, this fortified patch, is it doesn't sand very well. So that's why I'd like to use 
just fast drying spackle. You can get this at any hardware store, any paint store. The nice thing with this one here, maybe not so much in this application, but it goes on this pink color and then it dries uh, white. So if you were trying to keep the inside of the cabinet white, this would also work uh, as opposed to buying the plugs from Ikea. So basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start applying this spackle. And to start with, I'm just gonna basically use my finger and then we can follow it up with the putty knife just to kind of smooth everything out. But I find sometimes the best tools you've got are literally at your fingertips. And why I say that is because it allows you to kind of mold it and force it down into the hole because it will take some good amount of material into that hole before it's filled. And then once it's actually filled, you can take either a plastic knife or a metal knife. I think we'll go plastic on this one. And we're just gonna smooth everything off. In my case, we're gonna paint it. So we're actually gonna be sanding in here. We're gonna be kind of scuffing up this melamine or this plastic coated wood so that the paint has something really good to adhere to. So we don't have to be 100% perfect with filling in these holes right now because we're actually gonna be sanding after. So I'll show you how that goes in a couple of minutes. Okay guys and girls, so as you can see, we've got the one side filled in completely. Just work it in with your finger. If you feel more comfortable using the knife to try to work it in, that's fine. I just find that working it in with your finger first, it uh, gets it in at least most of the way. Uh, there may be some air pockets in there that'll keep it from going down all the way, but you're gonna get most of it in there. Definitely follow it up with the knife. The knife is nice because it takes off not only the excess, but it also smooths everything out because if you push too hard with your finger, you're gonna push it down and it's gonna leave an indentation in there. And when you paint it, if you're painting it, there may be a tendency to see that if uh, you know the light's reflecting off it at the right angle. So you don't want that followed up with the knife, you're gonna have no issues. Okay guys and girls, so we've allowed this to dry for 24 hours and it might be hard to see, but we still got some areas that need to be filled. Uh, you might be fortunate enough that this doesn't happen, but because they are big holes and the fact that the uh, spackle does shrink a little bit, I would highly suggest going over this a second time just to make sure that everything is going to be perfect. So the process is really quite simple. All we're going to do is take a sanding block. This one has seen some use, but it's just a standard light grit sanding block. And that's it, we're gonna clean this out and it's gonna be the second coat of spackle. So just like with the first coat, we're gonna use spackle. This time around, we're just gonna use the putty knife and I'm gonna use the metal knife in this case because it's a little bit more rigid and it's gonna allow us to fill in any divots or deviations. So that's the only difference this time around is we're not starting and fill in the holes with our fingers. And I like to kind of hit it from different angles, go back and forth, because if you just go one direction, it's not gonna fill it in. It's kind of like uh, shaving, you wanna go against the grain. So as you can see, wherever it's kind of a pinkish color, that's where it's actually added some material back in. So I think it's well worth it to do the extra coat if you're not too fussed about what the final finish is going to be, or if you think that there's going to be enough uh, wine bottles in there that it's not going to ever really be seen, uh, you can use your judgment on that, but I think a second coat is well worth it. All right, guys and girls, so as you can see, we've added the second coat of filler. Everything is nice and smooth, topped up now. You can take yourself sanding block or even just a sheet of sandpaper. 
sand this entire area until everything's nice and smooth. Do that on all sides. You're going to be ready for the next step. So if I haven't mentioned it already, IKEA actually makes little plugs that you can install. Just little white plugs here that go in these holes. And this kit is called the Verera. I'll put a link in the uh, description. But uh, this is a hundred pack. It is uh, $3.99 Canadian. And it's very deceiving, but you're gonna need that whole pack to do one of these cabinets. So if you have a white cabinet and you just prefer to go this route to fill them in, it would work. Uh, you could probably also paint these and they would work pretty good. The problem is, is that it's still got that, that dome top on it. So you're still gonna see it. I prefer this route here of actually filling everything in, but just wanted to give you guys and girls another option. Okay guys and girls, the next step is to add the dividers. We're gonna add two dividers in here thickness of this outside shell or the actual cabinet frame itself is three quarters of an inch three quarters of an inch times two is an inch and a half this is a 12 inch cabinet we're going to take that 12 inch minus the inch and a half gives us 10 and a half inches and you can also confirm that by measuring at each end 10 and a half inches do not measure from the middle because if the middle has a bow or a hump in it, you're going to be getting that wrong measurement. Always measure from the ends. Ten and a half inches times two. We're going to cut those shelves right now. Okay, guys and girls. So we've got the two shelves or dividers cut. So we rip them to ten and three quarters wide. The depth. So this cabinet is just under one tick under 14, if that helps you. Or if you want the exact measurement, it's 13 and 15 16 So what we did is we cut these down. We left three quarters of an inch on the top, which is going to be our reveal for when we actually run banding around here to kind of just bring everything out to the same dimension as the other cabinet doors. Because you got to remember, there's supposed to be a cabinet door on here. The cabinet door, when it's finished out, is about three quarters of an inch. So you don't have to do that. If you're fine with just the cabinet the way that it is, you could cut these dividers down to just a tick under 14 or 13 and 15 16 to be more exact. And you could just call it a day there. If you're okay with that look, that's fine. I'd like to finish this out so that it matches the same dimension and the same depth as my cabinets with cabinet doors. So just so you can see what we're dealing with here. So this is just a standard eight foot long shelf it can be purchased at any big box store, any hardware store. Uh, this one happened to come in black. It's got a bit of a uh, grain pattern on it, which I wasn't too keen on, but again, it's already painted black. So all we're gonna have to do is paint uh, the inside of the cabinet and everything's gonna, gonna just work out really, really nice. So you can see I'm cutting it on a miter saw. If you don't have a miter saw, cut it on your table saw. You don't have that you could try doing it with a handsaw I would not recommend that if you're in a bind you don't have the tools to cut this down go to your hardware store they do the first cut for free typically and then typically every other cut after that is a dollar you could just get them to cut it in store you don't have to worry about anything you can bring it home start assembling okay guys and girls so what we've done is we've laid out where these shelves or dividers are gonna go it's a 40 inch cabinet, so we've just taken 40 inches divided by three. It doesn't work out into really good um, increments on a tape measure. So to keep it simple, for 40 inch, 13 and 3 eighths, 13 and 3 eighths, and then it's not quite 13 and 3 eighths in the middle. You're about a uh, big 16th short. So um, mark that out. I'm gonna use screws on this. I'm going to use a countersink bit. You can use nails if you want. You can use screws without countersinking them, but if you don't countersink them, when you go to put this cabinet back in, they could be sitting proud and they could rub against the cabinet beside. So I've just laid it out three screw holes, just 
space it out however you want. I went two inches in, I hit the middle at seven and a quarter, and then two inches in from the back. I think that screws are the better option here because it's gonna be holding some wine, so it's gonna have the potential to um, have some weight on it. So I figured, why not? We're gonna add three screws per side. Just like that. Okay guys and girls, so what we've done is we've laid out some dimensions. And what we've done, hopefully this gets in the frame without me getting in the way. So what we've done is we've measured up 12 and 7 eighths, 12 and 7 eighths. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna meet right in the middle of that shelf. This is a cutoff. So as you can see, by the time we put that shelf in there, this is going to be dead center. Now it'll be a different measurement, obviously, if your upper cabinets are a little bit shorter, but 12 and a 7 8 on here. And then we did the same thing at the top. We measured from the top down 12 and 7 8 We're going to get these dividers fastened in place, and we'll see you on the next step. Okay guys and girls, so we're ready to actually fasten these in place. So we've already got the three holes obviously, so now it makes it really simple to actually get everything lined up. So I've got things lined up in here to my marks, which you can't see, but I showed you the marks before. What I like to do is either do fasten both sides first or fasten here, here first. It just allows you to kind of maneuver everything and get everything where it needs to be. Don't go one over here, one on some rando opposite side, uh, it's going to make it impossible to actually get things leveled up. But I like to do front to back. There's actually a fastener in here right now, fastener on the back side here, I'm ready to drill this one. So the nice thing with having this pre-drilled already is basically the holes already made. If your cuts weren't exact on the other side and that shelf is kind of moving up and down, all you gotta do is hold it for that split second and then once this drill bit goes in there, it'll grab it and everything's gonna be exactly where you need it to be. Now, we're just doing a setup right now. I'm just using a standard inch and a quarter drywall screw, fine thread, if it would actually focus on there. Fine thread. And uh, this way we're not gonna tear anything out. It's got a really, really uh, narrow shaft on under diameter, so we're not going to split anything. And again, it's just for setup right now. So once you have all four uh, uh, screws put in place, go back and actually do the rest of these. And that way it's done. Mark your shelves so that you know which one went where and uh, we're ready to move on to the next step. Okay guys and girls, so as you can see, we've got the actual angle dividers cut. Now, I'm gonna start with saying we cheated in a way. I'm trying to keep everything as simple as possible. And simple means not having to do complicated miter cuts on the end of these boards or these dividers. So what we've done is we've just cut them square. And the nice thing about cutting them square is that you can put them in this way or this way. So the reason why I say it's, it's kind of cheating is because we're not making that miter cut. And the other thing too is that this is not a perfect square. So if we're trying to figure out this angle, it's not impossible. But again, I'm trying to keep it as simple as I can for uh, the layperson. Uh, the the weekend warrior or the one that's just trying to put a wine rack in their apartment I, I, I don't know. I'm just trying to keep it as simple as possible um, Keep it simple stu student I was gonna say the other way, but keep it simple student with a little bit of knowledge You know, you'd be amazed what you can do you want to go through the efforts of trying to make the angle cuts by all means I might even go back and do that after I've got a little bit left over that I could actually do one or maybe even two with the angle cuts on them. Now, if you want the dimensions, the bottom and top is 15 and a big 5 eighths. 
this is 15 and three quarters exactly so that's your dimensions again it's keeping it simple you can flip it around easily and everything is nice and secure it's not going anywhere but we've left just enough room that when we slide things back and forth we're not going to actually scuff up that paint so one last cut that we need to make on the angled dividers is for this cover that'll be at the back of the cabinet so if you can visualize this we're going to be on an angle and i'm trying to do this one-handed and we've got that cover that's in the corner that we've painted black so dimensions for this are three and a half inches three and a half inches three quarters of an inch three quarters of an inch that's it I cut it with a jigsaw you can cut it with a handsaw table saw miter saw pretty much any saw that you've got if you want to take the marker and cover up these edges as well just so you don't see it so the next step after that is to finish up this edge so like I said we've left that three quarters of an inch gap and the reason why is because I've got some salvage three quarter inch flooring you can go to any home building supply store and pick up three quarter inch material they will actually cut it for you there too if you don't have the ability to do it I ripped this on my table saw so we're just gonna finish everything out with this three quarter inch material we're gonna fasten in place and then we're gonna paint everything and it's gonna all match again you don't have to go through this step if you want to just leave it as the base cabinet take off another three quarters of an inch on these all these pieces and call it a day but we're going to trim it out so that everything is flush and level with the rest of the cabinets okay so as you can see we've completed the three quarter inch trim around here we've already gone ahead and patched those holes with that same spackle that we were using to fill the holes inside the cabinet in my case i used a pin nailer so pin nailer is 23 gauge just really really microscopic nails sometimes they're called like a headless headless nailer or head, headless pinner um, yeah I, we've used it on a couple of projects already if you've been following along, along with the uh, IKEA stuff um, I, I really like it it's uh, less obtrusive than some of the other ones and I mean you're not trying to do something structural with this it's just literally a facade on there um, so yeah it, it has worked out great so far so we'll let that dry up and then what we'll do is we'll follow it with a nice sanding and this one here is just a 220 grit we're just going to give it a real nice scuff on the inside because this uh, melamine material uh, can be quite um quite difficult for paint to grip onto because it is so smooth and it is actually very very hard um so paint sometimes has trouble getting adhered to it even like a good primer sometimes has problems getting adhered to it we've got a solution to that and we'll see you on that next bit okay guys and girls so we've got everything sanded up we got the holes filled we went ahead and cleaned everything up with a nice lint-free rag if you've got the ability to spray some air in there that would help too and everything's clean now prepped we're ready for paint and this is where I kind of you know alluded to a secret weapon this is Krylon Fusion we are not sponsored by Krylon Fusion but I've heard good things about Krylon Fusion and melamine and plastics that it actually has um, you know the ability to kind of grab into plastics where a lot of other paints don't the nice thing too with the Krylon Fusion first of all it's got an easy remove cap on it a lot of them you got to use a screwdriver but this one it's got one of the wide tips so if you're gonna be spraying uh, it's not gonna kind of wear on you because believe me you think like you know oh I can't be that hard to spray paint you're trying to spray paint something this size guess what it's gonna wear on you so I don't like spraying inside I like to be outside because that way you're not inhaling as much The problem is is that today is pushing about 40 degrees with humidity the relative humidity has got to be damn near 100% it's basically soup out there 
Uh, so that's pushing like 100 degrees Fahrenheit for my uh, neighbors to the south of the border. But um, yeah, it's, it's not a good time to be spray painting. The paint will not dry properly or will take extremely long to dry. So painting inside is uh, what we're gonna have to do. The nice advantage of painting inside is that it is a little bit more controlled. For whatever reason, insects are really, really attracted to lacquer-based paints and even the odd um, uh, latex paint. So again, Krylon Fusion, all in one, paint and primer in there, blah, blah, blah. We'll see how it goes. Start with very, very light, even coats. You don't want to saturate this the first time through. Wear your proper PPE, get some ventilation in here if you can, and basically just start applying. You can see already how well that's actually covering. Light coats, and all we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a band around the outside because you're not actually gonna see it unless you're opening the door beside it. You'll see the backside of this. So we'll see you after the first coat. So guys and girls, here's the first coat. It went on fairly well. If you read the instructions, it actually says to uh, reapply within the first minute with your next coats. It says, I think one to two thin coats. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do, you know, another uh, thin coat on top of this. And then we're gonna show you how you're gonna touch up some of those uh, spots that need to be touched up on some of those shelves. Okay guys and girls, so we've got the two coats applied. Now if you're having some issues seeing it, take a flashlight and it'll help you sh see where the coats are and where the coats aren't now. We we're talking about plastics. You gotta remember, these things are white. So you gotta paint these things. Just like that. The one last thing that you need to remember, don't forget about, is painting the edge of these shelves. So when they're sticking down in there, you might have the ability to just barely see the end of this, okay? So you can take your spray paint and you can just try to mist onto that. Or what you can do is you can actually spray it down into a cup and take a brush and dip it in there and you can actually paint this edge. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take just a Sharpie magic marker and I'm just gonna cover up these ends so that if you're looking on the right angle, you're not gonna see that raw edge of that shelf and it only has to be done on the very front of the shelf. Really all you need to do, just this very leading edge that's it. And if you've got any oopsies, that's it. That's all you need to do. And when that's sitting down, down in there against this here, then you don't have to worry about seeing that raw edge. So we're gonna let this dry up and we're gonna put it back in and we'll see you for the end result. And another tip, so I'd shown you doing the edge of this with a Sharpie and the reason why I suggested a Sharpie is because most people that I know at least have a Sharpie kicking around. But if you want to speed up the process and actually seal this entire edge sharpie actually makes the magnum look at the tip on that thing can almost cover this whole edge all in one and again we don't need to do it with this piece all the way back we'll want to do it with that angle divider in there but it allows you to go and seal all these edges and now look at that See this other edge? 
Now you don't. See this back? Now you don't. So just a little tip. This will make things a lot easier and you can use it on other projects. I'm not sponsored by Sharpie, but Sharpie happens to make this one with, I think it's about a half inch tip. So just a little tips and tricks for you guys and girls out there. So just wanted to update you on a couple of things. So I was having some issues in the back of the cabinet, right at the back here. Whenever I would move the cabinet, there was just enough movement in that back panel because it's just nailed in that it would flex and you'd actually see a thin white line. Probably wouldn't see it by the time we get all the, uh, the dividers and shelves in there, but just to be safe, I used black caulking. I'm sure that using a marker would have been okay too, but at least this way now the caulking is actually kind of uh, locking everything into place so that when we move it again, that that back panel can move but it shouldn't pull out and kind of shift the way that it was again it's just little uh, finishing nails that hold that back cabinet panel in there so again uh, it's it's not the most rigid thing until you get it in place once it's in place it doesn't move so I hope you guys and girls found this video informative I tried to keep it as simple as possible uh, so that anyone, literally anyone could do this. If you're having trouble with cuts, you can take it to any lumber yard, uh, home building center, uh, supply center, and they will be able to make those cuts for you. Because I firmly believe uh, with a little bit of knowledge and sometimes a special tool here or there, and definitely some patience most times, that anyone is capable of this. If you liked the video, found it informative, think about giving it a thumbs up. Even better, if you could subscribe, it would help me out a lot. Uh, it helped the uh, algorithm for future videos. If you're looking for a place to find good content, informative content on house maintenance, car maintenance, property maintenance, this is the place. If you're looking for a place where you've got super cool video intros and uh, star wipes and all that fancy stuff. This isn't the place. I believe that the knowledge and the information is much more important than the flashiness of the content. And I think if you're here that you believe that too. Because remember, you never know unless you bear. We'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.